How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech and also to another tech news video. You guys know every Monday, Wednesday and Friday we go over all the latest news that happening in the tech world to keep you guys up to date on everything. So starting off with our first topic, Wednesday we said that direct storage from Microsoft might be coming soon. Well it seems like Nvidia didn't want to wait for them and they unveiled their own direct storage type of tech. As direct storage will be an application, a program interface or an API, but Nvidia is creating their own tech that doesn't need to be an API. It's called a big accelerator memory or in a short, Bad. <laughs> a description of the concept reads, the goal of a big accelerator memory or bang is to extend a GPU memory capacity and enhance the effective storage access a bandwidth while providing a higher level obstructions for the GPU's threats to easily make on-demand finer grain access to massive data structures in the extended memory hierarchy. Now hopefully in video will make it as easily as possible for the the developers of a game to actually implement it and make it a smooth transition for them because as we already know I'm not sure about all the development but DLSS and ray tracing does take some time to actually implement it in some newer games so hopefully it will be a smooth transition. Now however this will most likely only work in, in Nvidia cards so we'll see how it compares uh, against Microsoft of course and if AMD will be able to keep up then. We'll see how all of that goes. Now as for AMD, RDNA GPUs just got a little more attractive. This comes after AMD has released RSR or Radeon Super Resolution in its latest drivers. This is AMD's new upscaling technology and is intended to complement the in-game specific Fidelity FX Super Resolution. It's quite easy to actually set up. All you need to do is simply turn on the feature in the latest Radeon drivers, set your resolution in-game below your native monitor's resolution and RSR will do the rest. This also means that the game doesn't need to actually support the feature so it's basically just run it and it's actually going to work in a game the only thing is that it, the feature only currently works on the rtx 5000 series or newer cars so unfortunately no polaris cars of 580s and so on which is a bit unfortunate as those cards are uh, getting a bit weaker now and they would actually benefit quite nicely with this feature now for those of you that have been a piggybacking of a friend's netflix account your days might be numbered, unfortunately. Netflix has stated that people have been taking advantage of this feature that is intended to be used for a single household and not sharing it outside of their household. And seriously, they thought that people wouldn't be doing this. They've always kind of done this, sharing accounts like this. But anyways, Netflix is now testing a feature that will stop this from happening or you will have to pay extra if you want to add an additional Netflix account outside your own household. Subscribers on a Netflix standard and a premium plans will be able to add an extra member sub account for up to two additional people not in their household for $3 in Costa Rica and in Chile and about $2 in Peru and currently no word yet outside of those countries. So is this actually going to make you cancel your Netflix subscription or maybe get your own now? <laughs> Stop bicky backing off your friends account? I'm actually not sure. I think people will find a way to implement it or get a workaround of that. There's a bunch of smart people out there. It just depends on how Netflix will be implementing this. But if there's a will, there's a way. So we'll see what happens. Or of course, this could just force more people to go the non-paying route, <laughs> which a lot of people are doing. So we'll, we'll see what happens. I know Netflix didn't do this that well or didn't get the numbers that they wanted in subscriptions for the previous quarters. So we'll, we'll see what happens for the next quarters then. But I don't think this is the way to do it. Now, usually with hardware announcements, there are all kinds of claims about performance and so on, how they're the best thing that's ever made since sliced our bread. And also the same with Apple's launch and their claim that the M1 Ultra is going to be faster than the RTX 3090. 
Well, yeah, that's not really true. The charts that Apple showed is obviously what they wanted you to see, of course, uh, to buy their products. Sure, the M1 Ultra is a phenomenal uh, chip, especially considering the little power it actually uses, but it's not really going to be close to beating an RTX 3090. These are charts from The Verge uh, clearly showed uh, that as well. Now, again, it's not bad in performance, and I'm sure there is going to be instances where it could be better than a 3090 with specific software from like <laughs> Apple but not in the way that they are claiming like always but of course this is the way Apple works every time it's the best that they've ever made it's the newest and fastest and stuff they ever made which I hope it would be if it's a new product but anyway we'll leave it at that Wednesday we spoke about the upcoming Harry Potter game and that PlayStation is going to reveal some footage. Well the time has come and we have seen some footage and it actually looks pretty cool. So the game takes place way before the original storyline of, of the books like somewhere in the 1800s. You as a player will be able to learn spells, brew potions, grow magical plants, tame wild bees and also attain classes of course seeing as it's a school. Hogwarts seems to be a very detailed and huge. The game seems to be filled with original storylines, fresh professors, students, villains, mentors and creatures, plus some ghosts from the books as well. You will be able to fly on broomsticks, gain friends who will join you on your quests and then also upgrade your abilities. It's not just Hogwarts that you can actually go explore either. The shops in Hogsmeade also is available to explore. It looks like the game is going to be huge and I'm actually really excited for this. I think a lot of millennials or seeing as we actually grew up with Harry Potter for like 10 years almost. So I'm really looking forward to it and I definitely want to give it a try. Apex Legends, a mobile game, is open for pre-registration now. The game has been in pipeline for quite a while and it seems that EA and Respawn has made the right decision with making a mobile version of the game. With over 7 million registrations already, this might be a big hit for mobile gamers and for that matter, Apex Legends players all over the world. Pre-registrations are currently only available for Android devices, that is definitely a first, usually it's only for iOS, but EA promises that iOS is coming soon. You will also get some extra goodies if the game reaches a certain amount of registrations. Now I don't really play any mobile games, but I think a lot of people will definitely enjoy it, seeing as how popular uh, PUBG Mobile was and then also of course uh, Call of Duty Mobile. Then next up, Samsung has now unveiled their A series of smartphones and so far two models definitely caught our eyes. They were the A73 5G and the A53 5G. The A73 will feature a 6.7 inch Super AMOLED panel with a resolution of a full HD plus at a 120Hz refresh rate. Also it comes with an unnamed chip, 6 or 8 gigs of memory, 128 or 256 gigs of storage plus of course a micro SD card slot for up to an additional 1 terabyte of storage. It will also come with a 108 megapixel main camera with an f1.8 lens. On the other hand the A53 has a 6.5 inch Super AMOLED display with a full HD plus resolution also with a 120 hertz refresh rate but this one will feature a 32 megapixel selfie camera with the main camera being a 64 megapixel sensor and also again an f1.8 lens. There's also going to be a 12 megapixel ultra wide, a 5 megapixel macro and 5 megapixel depth sensor. Now I'm definitely keen to see how these phones is going to perform and I'm sure that it's going to do quite well especially for the price point. So it seems like the long-awaited Intel Arca GPUs are going to make their first appearance in a laptop. Promotional material of the Samsung Galaxy Book 2 was posted a bit early by BHP Photo Video. There is no GPU model yet but we think it could either be the A350 or A370 models. The listed laptop was priced at $1350 with a decent array of specs with a somewhat resembling a MacBook Pro like usually. It's definitely good to see that the time is drawing nearer for the release of these GPUs because I think the entire gaming community is definitely excited for another kit on the block, hopefully not the crypto blockchain uh, block, but uh, we'll see actually how it goes. 
And then finally, we have kind of covered this before about the rumors of the new Ryzen 7 5800X 3D will not be able to overclock. And now AMD's Robert Hallock has confirmed this as well. He explained that the huge 3D V cache is limited to working voltage of 1.3 to 1.35 volts, which is also the same reason the boost clocks aren't that high as some of the other Ryzen chips, which can go up to 1.45 or 1.5 volts. The 8 core CPU is also more focused towards gamers as modern games don't really support or utilize more than more cores than that currently. So all we really want to see of course is actually how it performs and if it's actually going to be that much better than the current 5800X. So we'll see. But anyway, that's pretty much it. I do hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please like, subscribe, and comment. Like always, again, all of the topics will be linked in the description below. Of course, you can find all of the timestamps and everything. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I do hope you have a lovely weekend, and I'll see you guys on a Monday again. Cheers, guys.